The U.S. housing market has been wobbly for several years, but showed some signs of perking up in recent months. The latest reports show a setback, however, with median prices dropping slightly and sales well below the already depressed levels of 2009. Yet a combination of remarkably low mortgage rates and apparent home price bargains should be drawing buyers into the market, especially first-time buyers who don't have to sell one home before they can buy another. Knowledge at Wharton asks real estate professor Susan M. Wachter why the housing market is so slow to recover, whether the recent slowdown in foreclosures is a factor, and how the housing market's poor performance affects the economy. Welcome, Professor. Well, the latest figures are showing a, a slight dip in home prices, and sales are still well below where they were a year ago, which was below where they'd been before. Is this just a sort of a bump in the road or, or an anomaly yeah, in the not, figures, or is this not, serious? It's not just a bump in the road, by no means. Uh, we had this run-up, if you could call it that. It was only a very slight run-up uh, during the period of the tax credit. That was the anomaly. We are in a period of uncertainty, and the uncertainty is affecting consumer confidence, and it's reflected in housing markets. This was before the tax credit, and we're back to that again. And do you think there's a prospect for a, a dramatic drop in prices, 10, 20 percent, the kind well, of, of course, thing we saw? Well, of course. There's always a possibility that it would depend on the overall economy. But with the overall economy slowly improving, and I emphasize the word slowly, then we should see uh, this kind of bouncing along the bottom in the um, overall housing market. And uh, what, what are the various factors, sort of a quick laundry list of the kinds of factors that are affecting the housing market and keeping it from reviving? faster? It's mostly unemployment. As long as the job market is recovering at this slow pace, then we will likely continue to see a very slow to up pace to uh, some concern about even a decline in housing markets. Because on top of the unemployment picture, there's also just overall consumer confidence, which is very weak. Putting that in front of this large decision, large purchase, clearly people are hesitant to go over that fence to purchase at, at a period of such uncertainty. On top of that, in the overall economy, there have been, uh, prices have been declining. And you can get into an expectation situation where prices are anticipated, that they are going to fall, and then clearly the buyer is going to want to hold off. Now, there's been a lot of news about foreclosures, and it wasn't long ago everybody was complaining about the high numbers of foreclosures. Now there seems to be a lot of worry that they're not proceeding fast enough due to this paperwork problem that's been in the news. To what extent is the overhang of foreclosures a factor in the market? It's a big factor. The overhang of foreclosures, the heightened inventory, the heightened vacancy rate, uh, even if uh, foreclosures, and they are slowing, they were slowing, and of course this uh, potential uh, discussion of moratorium, but in any case a slowdown in uh, some of the uh, banks, uh, in the short run could actually lead to a slight spike in housing prices. But the bigger picture is that it contributes to uncertainty, and that is the negative at this moment. And then another factor, I take it, is the high percentage of underwater mortgages. Somewhere around a quarter of the right. homeowners who have mortgages uh, owe more than their homes are worth. Um, why is that not resolving itself faster? Uh, well, that's, of course, the shadow uh, potential foreclosure pool right there. Mm -hmm. And people don't want to strategically default on their homes. Some do. but. The, that's a very small percentage, actually, of overall uh, borrowers who are currently in default um, are usually simply unable to make their mortgage payments because of a lack of a job or because uh, their, uh, their mortgage has repriced, reset, at a point where they can't, their current wage income cannot cover it. Uh, so, so really, again, whether these um, this overhang resu results in increase in defaults, and increase in foreclosures going forward, uh, depends very much on the overall economy. And particularly, we should take note of Chairman Ben Bernanke's recent move, which is to absolutely make certain that markets do not anticipate falling prices. Uh, the um, commitment to preventing deflation is absolute. That should help prevent a continuing slow slide in overall prices and housing prices. But that doesn't really bring the full weight of recovery. Only job growth can do that. 
And nobody wants to buy a home they think is going to be worth less six months later. Correct. Uh, now, uh, it seems it's been about a year and a half since the Making Home Affordable program was announced. And the numbers have been very disappointing. This was the, the plan that it was going to allow people to recast their mortgages mm -hmm. somehow with lower payments. Right. Why has, have, have it not been more homeowners able to do that or willing to do that? Well, it's really the bank's modification process. Um, banks are hesitant to modify. This is a very difficult, difficult uh, negotiated proceeding. And um, uh, the investors are over the shoulders of the banks. There are conflicts. Uh, this, there is no simple answer to this problem of underwater borrowers. If there were, we would have resolved it a long time ago. Again, if people cannot make their payments at some point along the lines, they are likely to be foreclosed. And the modification can only help if there is a job in sight. Now, uh, uh, a prominent part of the housing and mortgage market for quite a long time has been the securitization process, where mortgages are bundled and turned into securities that investors buy. What is happening in that market? That's been troubled. Is it, is it improving? Well, there is no securitization other than Fannie and Freddie and FHA through Ginnie Mae. And that is uh, upwards of 90 percent of all the loans that are being originated today are basically coming with federal support. So in that sense, the securitization market is doing just fine. If you're referring to the private label securitization right. market, that's gone. Any chance it'll come back? Well, absolutely. There needs to be going forward a private securitization market, but that's going to take reform of Fannie and Freddie. And that's my next question. Is, is there progress? Do you see that, that them being uh, more reckless or less reckless than they were in the past? Or uh, uh, should we be confident in the way things are going? Well, confident is exactly where we cannot be. But that's not because of Fannie and Freddie. Fannie and Freddie are very much at this point, uh, uh, if anything, like other lenders. They've raised the standards tremendously. In fact, the book of business that they are uh, insuring right now uh, is being extremely carefully underwritten. And Fannie and Freddie really were not the most egregious of the lenders by any means. The, the private label securitization was really the source of these um, infamous mortgages that were ninja mortgages, no income, no job, no assets. Uh, let's finish up with just, do you have a projection of the prospects for this market in the medium and long term? Yes, I think, you know, first of all, it does depend on job growth. You know, we could be surprised. We could have job growth. Clearly, corporate profits are up. Uh, at some point, uh, there is going to need to be a move on hiring, and that will be the bellwether for the housing market to recover. In the meantime, uh, as long as interest rates remain low, I think we're finished with this plunge, this downward plummeting of prices. So we're bouncing along the bottom. And if you're an investor, there are very potential profitable opportunities in the multifamily sector out there. All right. Well, we'll be watching it very closely. Thank you very much, Pleasure. Professor.